Hello, in this video I will talk about tries, quads and n-gons. And I'll be trying to answer the question about is it okay to use triangles or do you have to use quads? This is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels. And all the courses are free. Also if you have any questions you can get across to the Discord server and ask people on there. And there's also competitions and challenges which you can get involved in. Okay, so first of all what are tries, quads and n-gons? If we look at the screen at the moment, and I'll go into edit mode with tab, I've got a try, which is a three-sided face, so it has three edges on it. I've also got a quad that has four, and an n-gon that has more than four. Now it's important to understand that render engines will reduce everything to tries eventually, from my limited understanding of render engines. But it's actually useful to model in quads. It can sometimes be useful to model in n-gons. The main reason it's useful to model in quads is the fact that you can subdivide them easily and quickly. So if I want to cut this and press Control R, I can create a cut down the middle and it creates two more quads. And then I can cut those with Control R. I can use my wheel to create more loop cuts and insert those in. And you can quickly create shapes and models and add complexity as I'm doing here. I'll just undo all that. If I try to do the same with the triangle and press Control R, nothing will happen. Loop cuts don't go through triangles. I'll demonstrate that on here. I'll add two loop cuts on this face. And if I press Control R, I can create a loop cut down here as well. I'm going to undo that though. And I'm going to use the knife tool with K to create a triangle. So I'm going to cut from here to here and then press enter and now press Control R and it doesn't want to go through the triangles. So it'll create a loop here but it won't go through the triangles. That's one of the main reasons to avoid triangles when modeling. N-gons can also be useful if you quickly want to add a face to a group of edges like this and on a hard surface model this will be fine but again if I want to add to this and press Control R I can't add any loops at the moment. But if I convert it to quads by pressing K for the knife tool again and cut maybe across here, now I've got two quads and I can do a loop cut down the middle. And at that point, then I can start editing the shape. So I'll just undo that. So if I'm modeling, and let's say I want to create a face there and some sort of cylinder, this is absolutely fine. And let's say I render this, this will be converted into triangles anyway. But if I want to add any loop cuts with Control R, it will go down the sides here, but it doesn't go through the end gone. Whereas if I'm modeling with this, and I extrude the top, and then I want to add some loop cuts, I can do as many as I like. So it's much easier to model with quads. This is also important for subdivision surfaces. So I'll just add a cylinder, and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier to this cylinder. And you can see it doesn't like the triangles at the top. Even if I put the views up, it turns it into this squished sort of ball. So if I go into edit mode again and grab this top face, now if I press Control B to bevel those edges, and I'll put the segments up with my wheel, you can see that's done a good job of sorting out the problem. That's because we've got a flat end gone at the top, which Blender doesn't mind, and subdivision surfaces don't mind, flat surfaces that are end gones and we've got topology around the side to tell the subdivision surface what it's doing. If I go into wireframe mode now, you can see all the detail it's added. I'll bring the views down so you can see it a bit better. And that's the detail the subdivision surface is adding. So subdivision surfaces like quads. In the same way, we can add detail with loop cuts through quads. The subdivision surface is doing a similar sort of thing and dividing each face up into four. But as you can see at the top here, it's struggling to do that with the triangles and distorts them slightly. But that's okay when we're on a flat surface like this. So that's a good reason to try and keep to quads is for modeling purposes. When you're trying to add detail to something, it helps to have a mesh that's made up of quads. The other interesting thing is when it comes to animation. I'll show you this GIF here from Clark KT Portfolio. And this is a good example of actually triangles being useful in animation. So they're all quads here, but they squish in, in this section, and deform. It's okay, but it's not what we want. This is another one with quads, which definitely doesn't work because they're overlapping each other. But in this case, with a triangle in the middle, it's helping the deformation. So triangles can actually be helpful during animation, 
especially when you're dealing with low poly items like this that are animated. Generally though, people do stick to quads for more high detailed meshes. Lastly, I'd like to show you this and show you what can happen in the case of deformation and sometimes animation when using triangles. So here I have a rectangular cube and I've just smoothed it off with a subdivision surface which I can show you here. It's also got a simple deform on it, which I'll use in a second, but I've turned that off for the moment. So you can see the triangles in here. I've just cut one in half to make a triangle. And let's go to the simple deform and see what it does. So my simple deform has curved it round and it does this function, curving it round like this. Let's have a look at what's happening to that triangle. I'll go to the mat cap so you can see it a bit. There's not too much difference there but we can see some minor deformation here with the mesh. I'll bring the views down a bit and see if that makes a difference. Not much of a difference, but you can possibly see the change in shading. Hopefully you can see that on YouTube anyway, that's happening there, just because of the triangle that's in the shape going across there. It's not making a huge difference, but it is making a slight difference. I'm going to get rid of that triangle now. So I'll go to edge, delete and dissolve edges and that will get rid of an edge without deleting the faces around it and I'm actually going to get rid of a few edges here as well so delete dissolve edges and we can see that deforms it in a very strange way so you might have a shape like this and you want to add detail I'll just turn off the deform for the moment so you can press ctrl r to add that bit of detail let's say in here and then when I go back to my deform it will deform the shape more smoothly. So there's a scenario where I needed to add loop cuts, add detail so it would deform properly. But I wouldn't have been able to do that with triangles in the way. So when you're deforming things, bending things, sometimes you need more topology to create curves. And in order to add that topology, you need to be able to create loop cuts. And that's much more difficult with triangles. Here's a character I've been working on. And I've just finished a very basic retopo or retopology. So I've gone over this base mesh with faces and retopologized it as the base mesh was made out of a sculpt. And now I've retopologized it with simple quads. But I haven't done a great job of this. When retopologizing, your edge flow is quite important. So if I want to add detail, let's say to the bottom of the jumper, I can press Ctrl R. It's mirrored at the moment, so this will duplicate across the other side and I can add loop cuts like this. Let's say I wanted to add one down here to add a bit of detail there. That's no problem, that's fine. And that's reasonably fine topology going through there. But let's say I wanted to add one in here, let's say. Now I'm coming up against a problem. I'll apply this loop and it's going all the way up round his head. And then because of the slightly poor topology here, it's looping back across his ear and around in front of his nose. And that's where your edge flows are important so you can add loop cuts and add details to your mesh. Now what you can do is add a triangle to stop those loop cuts from going all the way around. So I could add a triangle in here somewhere. So I'll undo my loop cut. Add a triangle by selecting those two and pressing J for join. And now if I do a loop cut around the same part, just there, it stops at the triangle. It's created an end gone here, which we have to sort out, but it has stopped the shape at that triangle. So they can actually be slightly useful when modeling. If you want to add topology and you don't want it flying around the place, you can add triangles in to stop those things from happening and then tidy up afterwards. But as you can see here, I end up with this triangle. And if I delete that, I'll end up with an end gone just here. Okay, so I hope that clears a few things up about quads, triangles, and end gones. It's one of those things that you will get with practice as you model more and see the effects. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps.